Well, hello, everyone. It's Saturday night. Welcome to a brand new series of the Jonathan Ross Show. And look, we've got a brand new set. You like it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Pretty great to see, isn't it? I feel like I've gone through the keyhole into Elton John's utility room. <laughs> we have got some amazing guests coming up the next few weeks. And wow, what a way to start tonight. Let's see who's in the green room this evening. We fell in love with her in Speed. We loved her even more in Miss Congeniality. Of course, her Oscar winning performance in The Blind Side. So many great movies. It's Sandra Bullock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sandra, you look good. Also, we have one of not only one of our biggest selling pop stars of all time, but she's also one of the all time greats of British television, Miss Scylla Black. <laughs> Hello, Scylla. Hello. I'm always so excited when I see Scylla Black. Also, on the lineup tonight, one of the biggest stars on the planet, Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. This Saturday night, Mr. Tom Hanks, looking gorgeous and handsome as ever. And with his first live TV performance since turning pro, it's X Factor winner James Arthur. <laughs> Young James, looking cool, James. Looking handsome, cool, composed, ready to go. That's all coming up in a minute. First of all, let me just get this out of the way because there's no question what was the biggest news story this week? Liam from One Direction had his pants stolen. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Silla. <laughs> well, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> You've never stolen anyone's pants, have you, Silla? Well, I would... <laughs> if I had the chance, I would have stolen Cliff Richards. Wow. <laughs> so many things I want to say, but none of them I feel I can. <laughs> uh, you know what I found most shocking about that story, ladies and gentlemen? I didn't think those boys even wore pants. <laughs> Harry Styles doesn't need pants. To Harry, pants are like the plastic cover you get on the screen of a new mobile phone. Once you've peeled them off, there's no point putting them back on. You're open for business. He doesn't need the coverage. And things have changed 20 years ago. The girls used to throw their pants at the stars. Tom Jones used to get them thrown at them all the time, you know? Maybe, I'm thinking, maybe that girl wasn't actually a One Direction fan. Maybe she just needed a new pair of pants. The recession has hit everyone. <laughs> Silla, uh, you, you know Tom Jones, of course. Well, is there anybody that I don't know at my age? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were a friend and a, an associate. You never threw your pants at him, did you? No, they weren't big enough. OK. <laughs> Tom, have you ever thrown your pants at anyone? Uh, in anger, yes. In <laughs> uh, furious. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I want to end on a nice positive note with this. This is the cutest picture I've seen all week. Uh, get ready. This is as cute as it gets. Have a look at this animal. <laughs> How cute is that? That cat's name is Snoopy Babe. I think the cutest cat in the world, and I've seen a few. OK, look at that. It looks like Holly Willoughby in a onesie, doesn't it? Look at that. Look, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, waves of ah. Oh. Here she is, fresh from the shower. Look at this. Do you see that? <laughs> And you know she's a girl because only women can do that thing with the towel with one hand and it stays on the head. She might look cute and innocent now, but give it a couple of years and she'll be in her pants swinging on a wrecking ball. <laughs> That's how they all grow up. Every dad's, every dad's nightmare right there. OK, but of course you know what happened because this is, we've just shown you a new cute animal and it's only a matter of time before some ridiculous, shallow celebrity will get one of those cute cats just to draw even more attention themselves. And I think, what a great idea. So say hello to my new little friend, Heathcliff. Here, look at this. You're pretty gorgeous, aren't you? She's gorgeous and she knows it. How sweet is she? It's a he, sorry. How sweet is he? <laughs> He's so sweet, in fact, that if anyone in the studio has type 2 diabetes, they should look away now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Take him, take him to my dressing room, and I'll love him for a week before I forget about him like all the other animals I bought. Now, uh, let's get my first guest out. Ladies and gentlemen, she's already bad one Oscar. I don't want to jinx it, but if you ask me, she is a shoe in for another one for her incredible performance in a remarkable new film. It's not out until November. She's here tonight to talk about it. It's called Gravity. Will you please welcome the fabulous Sandra Bullock, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Incredible. 
Wow, what an outfit. I love it. Thank you. I'm loving the short. Look at those shorts on there. You go there, you can... I know, hard not to follow. I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, congratulations on the film. Like I just said, uh, I've seen it and uh, I was looking forward to it. Wow, it really was just incredible. James Cameron, and we know James Cameron, he directed Avatar, he directed uh, Terminator 2, you know, he knows his stuff when it comes to space. He described Gravity as the greatest space film ever made. Mm. Um, but I guess when you're making a film, you have no way of knowing whether people are going to love it or yep. whether you put the same amount of work into a film which, which doesn't click with people as, yep. a, as a hit. Well, that's the, I think that's the case with any film, but this one in particular. Usually you have chemistry or some scene at the end of the day, you go, yes, I nailed it, I was amazing. Um, not in this case. No, there was never a day that we thought we were amazing. <laughs> well, we should explain as well, because it's 90% just on you, isn't it? It's 90%, 80% of the film is just looking at you and you're trapped in various yes, situations. Sorry. And... It's, that's, well. yes, that's what you do. <laughs> Without makeup on, you didn't wear makeup either, did you? Yeah, that, sorry again. <laughs> and that's when a 3D face comes hurling at you. <laughs> And again, I'm going to apologize. It's, it has some horrific elements. My face coming at you without makeup <laughs> is one of them. So. In, and 3D, and you can see it on IMAX. 3D and IMAX. Oh, again, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, you're stuck in space, and this is the, I don't want to give too much away, I guess. You can set up for us, but you're stuck in space, but with George Clooney. I know. That I'm not going to apologize for. <laughs> George Clooney. I bet he looks pretty good in 3D. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> He does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a, a clip we're going to show you, and I'm warning you, even the clip is kind of intense. Uh, I went to see this with my wife, and she said the film should have a warning on it because she said she almost had a panic attack several times during oh. the film. I mean, she was sitting there holding her breath at one stage. Uh, so we're going to show you the clip now, but it is really intense, and you'll see just uh, how powerful the drama is. This is Gravity. It opens here on 7th of November. Explore permission to retrieve Dr. Stone. Here it goes, along. Piece there, you're going because she detaches and it looks like she's even in a worse situation. That, she she kind of is. That's yeah. no fun. Yeah. Um, so you're shooting that. I mean, it, you know, I would have thought that was shot in space. Yeah. I, and I know how that is, but that looks like it's in space. You were, I guess, you were on devices for a long time. You were being spun yeah. around and thrown around. We had it. we had several sound stages, which are all like large black rooms, and at the end of each one was a torture device that that required me to get into it and be tortured for you know eight to ten hours. But it was amazing because everything that they invented for this, it was, it was a prototype. They invented specifically for this because the technology did not exist until those amazing minds came together and created that apparatus. I hear there was, is there was a camera that would rush towards your face at, at yeah. great speed, is that why? Yeah, one? yeah. Yeah, that, that it did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Allegedly, and I didn't find this out until he started doing press, the day before I was to get into that, you know, it's, it's called the light box. You're sort of harnessed in and you can't move. You're, you're locked in. And the camera's rushing at your face 25 miles per hour. And allegedly, it went through the dummy's head. Wow. And um, that was the day before I got there. Wow. And they just didn't feel the need to mention that. <laughs> Can you call George Clooney a dummy like that? Is that OK to say that? Is that... <laughs> Now, now. You know I'm Not just teasing. Not to our George. Can't okay. do that to George. Well, hey, speaking of George, I hear yeah. you guys had... Uh, obviously, you have a rapport. You've known him for years. I know. I don't think you'd worked with him before now, had no, you? No, we've known each other over... Embarrassingly, over 20 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you had... Uh, was there a competition of sort? I read there was a competition of sort going on the set between the two of you. Well, you know, it was either making fun of our director, Alfonso Cuaron, who's a wonderful man from Mexico, and we attempted the accent. But it turned out a little Cuban, a little, you know... Al Pacino, you know, how you doing? Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> so we either did that, um, or we would rap off to a, an old rap song that we both knew from, from high school. Would it be this one? Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Well, hold on. Yeah. Give me that one. That's the one. Yeah. How much of that rap do you know? <laughs> I know a lot. You know a lot. <laughs> I mean, the sad part is I, I learned the words because I liked this, this guy in high school, and I was like, next time I go to that dance, I'm going to know every word. I'm going to make sure he sees me lip syncing it, and I'm going to catch his eye, and I'm going to, like, say the words, and he's going to like me. <laughs> and sadly, it worked. Wow. <laughs> I know. Wow. I have so, those so, skills. Uh, could we have a little bit of the rap from you? Would you I mean, uh... can you buy the... <laughs> It's, it's what the people want. Are you gonna are you gonna play it? I think we would you like it would you like it to be played and join in or would you rather just uh, do a Does solo spot? Else hear Freestyle this song? <laughs> Okay, I'll do I'll do I'll do the first one and then I'll you know I'll just I'll, if I feel Shall I we, continue. Do you Can want I just, the music? Yes, in? I need music okay. to do this. Do you, if I'm gonna humiliate gonna... myself, I need some beats. Give me some beats, yo. <laughs> <laughs> You're so old school. I know it. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> if we if we could give uh, Ms. Bullock the beats she's requested. Oh, so you're not even going to play the lyrics to show that I know them? No. Yeah. Well, we'll know. They're, I think they're really... Oh my God! What am I doing? I said a hip hop, a hippie, a hippie to the hip hip a hop, and you don't stop the rock to the bang bang the boogie. Say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie the beat. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm a rapping to the beat. And me, the group, and my friends are gonna try and move your feet. See, I am Wonder Mike, and I'd like to say hello uh, to the black, to the white, the red, and the blue, <laughs> and yellow. But first, I gotta bang, bang. <laughs> 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 that was great. Wasn't that great, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Wow, there's a lot of lyrics there. I don't know any of them. I know, I know. But That's George funny. actually knows a, a few more of the lyrics. I, some of the bridges I got lazy and I felt they were unnecessary in my luring of yeah, the, of the yeah, man yeah. in So you were, you were just... I got lazy. Yeah. yeah, hip. So I did a lot of that. But he knows all the, the bridges I mean, that, that I... deep voice of it. Oh, uh, and he, yeah, it's, he brings that on too. Yeah. And then yeah. he gets all, oh, brother, we're out there on you. Right. And he just... You know what? I was thinking about your career. I was thinking about some of the, 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 the best films I've seen you in and a couple of films which didn't hit as much. That maybe <laughs> you weren't... mean the stinkers? <laughs> well, one or two. Yeah. But not many. Yeah. Very few. <laughs> and you know what was a remarkable year, I thought? There was a film come out called, uh, was it called It's All About Steve? Or... Oh, one of my favourites okay. still. It's going to become a cult classic okay. in about another four years. OK, so it may well. It's 2009. And that came out and you won an award, people awarded that, and, and it's all subjective, of course, but they said this is the, the, the worst, worst film, film ever of made. the year. Yes, okay. yes. And, and what I loved about Sandra Bullock is you turned up to accept that award. Yes, and then they took it back. <laughs> Because <laughs> apparently I took the original award, and I go, well, what, what else am I supposed to take? <laughs> so yeah, so they gave me, a, a, it's called the Razzie, so I accepted that with great flair. And here's the thing, that's the same year, a little later that year, the, the Blind Side came out, mm -hmm. the Blind Side, for which you won the Oscar, mm -hmm. one of the best movies, certainly, of the last decade or so, and certainly of that year. So I guess, once again, you, you never know going in there. Yeah. For, you work as hard on both those yeah. films, and then... Well, no one sets out to make a crappy film. You know, you, you set out to work as a team and, and work on an idea that might be original in a, in a sort of storyline that we all are familiar with, but you want to do something different, and when you push the envelope, there's either the failure or there's the, you know, odd chance that things come together. But is it harder, then to, is it harder to make a comedy? I know you've made a lot, but, I mean, of course, oh, yeah. Blindside is you know where the drama is and yeah, you know it's yeah, a true story, yeah, yeah. whereas you're making something about Stevie's the tone and everything. Is it just a tougher job? It's comedy? Yeah. Because if, if, if it's not working... Um, it, it's nothing can fix it uh, unless you just keep at it and, and you don't have music or cut into a close-up shot or, or all the elements to help you sort of figure it out. So when it's a stinker, it's a stinker and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, but The Blind Side is a great film. I, you know, it's one of those movies that where if someone in the house is sick or something, someone will put it on because it's so heartwarming, it's so lovely. And, you know, I cry every time I see it. But you know, the nice thing is that that's that family. They are exactly like that. I mean, we, I even toned her down a little bit, but I... I I love that family. They, they are still those people. I still communicate with them on a, at least a weekly basis or every two weeks. And they just are, they are unabashedly brave in how they love and how they take care of people and force other people to take care of the people that are in need. Uh, do you still uh, smuggle sausages? <laughs> If you're referring to the Bavarian food sausage, why, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> that so, sausage, yes, I, I so could, would you, to would smuggle. You, would you like to explain yourself? <laughs> Did you smuggle one into the UK? You can get them here, I guess. I was, I, was, I was in Bavaria just before I came here and was contemplating, do I smuggle or do I not? 
Um, but I could not locate the sausage of choice because it is very specific, as we all know. You can't just have a general sausage. You, uh, you should explain. You have a love of a particular German sausage. They know what I'm talking about. They didn't go to that, that disgusting potty place that you went to. <laughs> well, I just wanted to explain. This is the mother, your mother's side yes, of the family. Yes, it's in, in Nuremberg, or Nuremberg, if you're German. They have these little Bavarian sausages, and they're fried and seasoned in a way, and you have them for a traditional Christmas dinner, but we eat them for our Christmas dinner. So to get them into the States after my mother passed away, she passed away with the secret as to who was her connection. Because wow. she would get them smuggled in and they always arrived. And we keep asking the family, who was it? And no one will give up wow. the person. Wow, it's because... very, very mysterious. So if any of you know Who's... who helped my mother smuggle the sausage, <laughs> let me know. Well, it sounds like you've got it down to a fine art yourself, though. I'm not going to ask you where you hide them, but I mean, that's the thing. a... I, I'm hiding them openly. I mean, I can't... <laughs> You're wearing them, are they your but earrings? No, but no, what I said, I said, I smuggle it. Yeah. So, and so, you know, if you go through customs, you're just like, really? You're just gonna, you're gonna take the wieners, really? <laughs> you think they turn a blind eye for you? No, I've had them taken. Wow. So what I also do is I have them shipped from various sources, and I'm, 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 I'm hopeful one will arrive before Christmas. <laughs> do you like a British sausage now and then? Hmm? <laughs> oh, well, who doesn't? I mean, who doesn't? You know, on that classy note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, let me say, for no other reason than I believe so heartily, Gravity, one of the best films I've ever seen and one of the best performances I've ever seen. Go and see it. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Sandra Bullock. Still to come on the show, we have music from X Factor winner James Arthur, Cilla Black and Tom Hanks. So don't go away. Join me after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. This, uh, this is incredible. Our next guest is celebrating a remarkable 50 years in show business. That's incredible, considering she's only 43. Here <laughs> are just uh, a few moments uh, from her incredible career. Take a look at this. Do you want to blow him a kiss while you're at it? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and one for me. And what a Laura, Laura surprise has been done for a lot of people. <laughs> surprise, surprise, it's still here. Hello and welcome to Blind Date. Hello, gorgeous, how are you? Oh. What's your name and where do you come from? Oh. There's our Graham for the quick reminder. Here is your Blind Date. I'm oh. filling up myself. <laughs> Please welcome the incomparable Miss Scylla Black. Come and make yourself comfortable on the couch here. There are some memories there, I imagine. Uh, there was. By the way, before we start, congratulations. It was a big birthday this year, I believe. Why did you have to bring that up? <laughs> yeah, I was 70 this year, ladies. Oh, yeah. There's no way anyone would have known if we hadn't given that number out. The celebrating star, did you uh, do I imagine, had a special party for Well, them. I actually escaped, really. I didn't want... I couldn't cope with being 70. So I went to my friends in New York and then I went on to L.A. Wow. And I went on the strip. I did the strip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I did... I start, we started off in the Rainbow Lounge. Wow. And we well, that's went... a, a hip kind of a trendy place to be, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. And I got picked up by two American girls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then I went on to the Viper Lounge. You went to the Viper Lounge? That's the yeah. club that Johnny Depp started a few years ago. Yes, he did. Yeah. And I was Ed banging there. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up in a gay bar. Well, where else? At three o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. And do they know you? I know you had a big career in America as well, but I guess over here you are, like, instantly recognisable everywhere. Yeah. Do, you, do people notice you there? Do, no. I can do anything that I want when I'm <laughs> And I do. Uh, I'm growing old disgracefully. <laughs> well, that's the way. That's the way. That's the way. And I would expect nothing less of you. <laughs> You're not going to let us down. Uh, it's not the only celebration, of course. As I said, 50 years in show business. Paul O'Grady, who I know is a dear friend of yours, 
He's celebrating with a, there's a show called The One and Only Cilla Black. It's on a Wednesday, 16th of October, here on ITV. It's an overview of Cilla's career, and of course, it was in this studio, in this building, that you recorded Surprise Surprise for so many years. Yes, I did. Blind Date for so many years, in this very studio. There must be some memories in here for you. Well, there is. I did Surprise Surprise for 20 years. 20 years? Wow. And I did Blind Date for 18 years. And it was fabulous moment. It was such a great show. Um, I, I looked at some of the old questions you asked them, and it's remarkable you think how hard it is to answer these while sounding seductive without going too far. Here's a couple. Uh, so uh, I'm going to put this one, I think, to... Uh, this one goes to Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Sandra? Yes? It's, if you were to describe yourself as a kitchen appliance... <laughs> and bear in mind, you've got to win me over for a date here. What would you be? I think she'd be an electric whisk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying this. Cos you'd whisk the blokes into a frenzy. Wow, well, yes, yes! <laughs> well, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Yeah. But then it sounds good. OK. When it was asked by Cilla on the show, she said, if I was a kitchen appliance, I would be an oven, warm on the inside and cool on the outside. Oh. What okay. appliance would you be and why? Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with the, the same family as the whisk, maybe like a mixer? Because okay. <laughs> I'd like to mix it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the way... OK. Tom, you know I'm coming for you oh, now. I forgot the seduction. I'm sorry. I yeah. forgot that part. OK, let me try it again. Um... I'd say a mixer, because <laughs> I like to mix it up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, I'm knocked out, man. You, you had me a mixer. my blind okay. day. Tom, here's one for you. If you stood in front of a full-length mirror, what nickname would you give yourself? <laughs> the Hidden Sausage. I do not want to know why it's hidden or where it's hidden. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Wow, that's, uh, that's some sausage you're boasting about there. Um, wow. That was fun. Hey, well, let's see a clip. This is a clip from the uh, one and only Cellar Black. Uh, it's out on Wednesday night here on ITV, and it's a fun thing because you, you look at some of the, the bigger characters who are on the show way back when, and you get them back, and we see them now. Have a look at this. This is uh, from the show, the one and only Wednesday night. You got your bongo, and I've got my set of bongos. <laughs> Let's get we can go bonky. <laughs> if you get picked tonight, what are you hoping that lady beyond those screens will look like? Same as me with long hair. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, I say boys, but I use the term loosely, very loosely. Oh, my God. Well, they're good sports to come back on, aren't they? Yeah, they were they're good sports. Sport. You know, Lucilla has a book out. This what? is an incredible oh. book. But actually, before we look at this, here's the thing I didn't know, you know, and obviously we're all Scylla fans in this building, right? And I get so excited when I know I might have the chance to interview. But when I was talking to my other guests, I didn't realise Tom Hanks is a huge Cilla Black fan. Uh, this is right, Tom, isn't you it? Tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Because you love all the kind of Mersey, the 60s stuff. Uh, I have seen, I have seen a, 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 a horrible fuzzy copy, but very watchable, of Fairy Cross the Mersey that has none other than Cilla Black at the... It's a magnificent movie. She's fabulous in it. Wow. <laughs> and that's pretty high praise, <laughs> indeed. You downloaded me. Well... <laughs> Whatever that means. Well, I... <laughs> It can mean so many things. Let's have a look at this. This is Back to Black. Uh, it's an authorised photographic memoir. Because, of course, your book came out a few years ago, your actual yes. autobiography, which I read and I loved. And some of the stories in that are yeah. remarkable. I, well, I didn't know, you know, Scylla could very well have had a criminal record. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about when I pinched a lorry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, me just, let me just ask you, is that not the most surprising sentence Scylla Black can say? <laughs> You were, how old were you then? I was ten years old. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, I used to play in Bostock Street. 
and there was this lorry there. And I do apologise now. <laughs> you know, it was me that pinched the lorry. Silla, what did a ten-year-old want with a lorry? <laughs> I was a tomboy. <laughs> did you hotwire it or did you find the key? I mean... No, we put it in uh, a freeload. It, is that what you call it? Yeah, I don't... I've never it stolen went... one, so I don't know what, <laughs> what the technical term for this crime it is. Went, um, I... You know, I fiddled with that stick. <laughs> the stick. You got, just got it into the, the white gear, stick. hit the hill... And then it... Oh, sure. You know, it wasn't in... I d didn't turn a key, no key or anything. No, it, uh, I, it went into a lamppost. Oh. <laughs> yeah, speed, but I was all right. That's the main thing. Were there other lorries there? Were there a lower, lower lorries? Or was it just... Um... <laughs> Laura, Laura, Laura. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> some, of the, some of the pictures in this book are incredible, because, of course, they all happened very quickly for you, didn't it? I mean, at one minute you're, you're singing yeah. kind of locally, and the next thing, and then you meet Brian Epstein and you're, you're signed by him. Well, there we go. You know, at 19, I was uh, working at the office and in the cabin at lunch times, listening to the Beatles and getting five bob an hour. Wow. Oh, uh, you had to be paid to listen to the Beatles? They weren't any good back then? Is that... <laughs> no, no, no. I was very canny. Wow. You know, I worked in the cloakroom. What a job. You know, Ringo was a great friend of mine and still is. And uh, when they got short of Pete Best and all the girls were shouting, bring back Pete. Peter's best. And there was me and my girlfriend shouting, Oh, let Pete rest. Ringo's best. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it was. You were, you were the voice, time. you were the balance right there. Uh, but, yeah. but you're still in touch with Ringo. You, are you still in touch with Paul as well? Are you still in touch with the other? I, I, you know, I Peter? must confess, and you heard it on national television first, he never sent me. A Christmas card. That was the first time ever, well, ladies year. and gentlemen. This year? Yeah, this wow. last Christmas. Ringo sent you one. Ringo sent Paul me didn't. one. No. What a. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm seeing him soon. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring that up. With How him. are you? Yeah. Oh, these are great pictures. This is just a great book. If you like this period in British show business, which is a long one, then you want to get yourself a copy of that. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous, the one and only, Silla Black. Thank you, Thank you Silla. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Still to come after the break, music from X Factor winner James Arthur and Tom Hanks will be here. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I love Silla Black. I'm so thrilled she was on. Hey, let's get our next guest on. Uh, you know, stars do not get much bigger than this man. I could read out his CV, but it'd be much simpler if you just have a look through your favourite DVDs because he will be in almost all of them. Please welcome the one and only Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Take a seat there. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. That's it. Man, it's, hot, it's hopping backstage there. <laughs> you having fun by that? Oh, man, I, Lord, yeah. You know, there's free food and uh, Scylla Black. What oh. more can you ask for? <laughs> Here's the thing. Let's just clear this up out of the way. It's been in the papers all this week. You're fine. Your health is fine. You're in a good deal. Yes, I am. In this. Talk about the Except diabetes. Except for I've got type 2 diabetes. Anybody? Let's see a show of hands. High blood sugars. Let's raise them up. Folks, you have the natural health. You should know this stuff. <laughs> Do you have, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, I we have the natural health, but we don't have the American diet over here. That's ah, what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Oddly enough, I've been told that despite the uh, preponderance of high blood sugars in my diet, uh, hidden sausages are things I can well, eat as can much as I want. <laughs> Isn't that uh, exciting? But you're fine, we get out of there, that's good. And you're not dead either. I read that on the internet a couple of years oh, ago. Yeah. That you were dead, but you, you want to clear this that up? This was hilarious. There, that, was, that, was from a, that was from a website that said, everything on this website is false. Create your own goofy news report. <laughs> and it said, this is a gag, this is for, it, spring it on your friends. And it was that I, I died in a Jeep crash in New Zealand. And I had the news showing up at work the next day saying, is there any truth to this? <laughs> 
you dead, Mr. Yes. Hanks? Yeah, yeah, I don't okay. know what to tell you. Okay, let's get uh, Tom's film because I'm lucky there this week, and uh, I'm not just saying this, I I've seen two of the best movies of the last decade this week. I've seen Gravity and I've seen Captain Phillips. Captain Phillips opens in the UK next Friday. Tell us the story. It's a true story. This is based on a real story, and you've met the guy yeah. here. Yeah, uh, a merchant mariner captain named Richard Phillips was. His, his ship was hijacked. They were bored by pirates, which had never happened before because these ships are so tall, but Cute. they had a ladder. Uh, <laughs> and not only that, uh, that, uh, that, that was it. Uh, and and for, for the better part of five days, he was held hostage by these guys. And it was very, it was very touch and go as to whether or not there was any, any uh, way out of this horrible circumstance. Being able to, to interact with four very angry guys who were in the middle of, <laughs> who were in the middle of, uh, of uh, uh, what is it called, uh, a chemical, um, uh, uh, they were coming off cat. You know, they were in... So this is the stuff these guys, the, the Somalian guys, from there, they're chewing this uh, grass or herb or something, and it's, it's, it's a, a leaf, I understand. It's a, it's a leaf. What and kind they, of a... They thought they were going through drug withdrawals because they ran out of this, uh, this stuff called cat. K-H-A-T? Have you Anybody? tried K-A-H-T. No, no. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Folks, you've got the national health here. You should be able to tell me these things. Did you try any... Come no, they didn't have real cat where we were. We I wanted to know what, what it was like. But for a while, it was you could buy it here in London. As a matter of fact, when we were shooting, the, our, my two good Somali friends, the pride of uh, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Barkad, Mahat, Faisal, and Barkad, they were saying, oh, we're, we're going to London to shoot in Long Cross. We shot some stuff out there on the, on the, in the lifeboat. And I said, yeah, no, we're looking for it because we could get cat there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now they now you can't get it's cat. It's bad now, I believe. Yeah, Actually, yeah, you can know. get cat, but it's that odd looking one you had wow. at the we beginning of the film. Odd looking one. <laughs> odd looking one, Look, the cutest I, cat I've ever seen. I, I love animals, I love cats, but I, I'm I'm you're gonna get a little argument from me on how cute that cat was. What? Am I wrong? <laughs> Am I wrong? I don't it was an interesting looking cat. Now look. That's a cute, that, that's a cute, cute cat. That looks like something you stick in the back of your car and its head moves around. <laughs> As you, as you change legs. Those eyes are spooky. <laughs> They're spooky demon cat eyes. I swear to God. Now you mention it, there is a demonic quality behind yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I love cats, a little thing to cuddle up with me, I think, Greg. But I, if I woke up with that on my chest after a nap on the couch, I'd, you know, I'd lose my sausage. <laughs> I'm going back. Okay, we're going back to the sockets thing. Why you won that back? Well, that was a, a journey. Blame Sandy. Okay, let me ask Curse you about you. let me ask you about the guys in the film because you're playing the lead role. You're playing Captain Phillips. The Somali guys you mentioned, they're, they're, they're real Somali. They weren't really actors before the film, though, were they? They're real Somali. They were guys. actually sitting at home. Uh, there they are. That's uh, that's Faisal, uh, uh, Barkad, yeah, little Barkad, and Mahat. And they were they were sitting at home one day and they saw. Uh, on the news that said uh, uh, open calls wanted, Somali actors wanted for, for film. And that's hilarious uh, about pirates. Yeah. Because I was sitting at home in LA a couple of months before and I was watching TV and this thing came across and said movie stars wanted for film about uh, Somali pirates. So <laughs> I hightailed it down to the studio and uh, <laughs> got a parking place in front of George Clooney and Brad Pitt and uh, was the first in line. They didn't get it. They, didn't uh, they get it. did you know, not. They're going to give it to you. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Well, who wouldn't give it to Tom Hanks over those two losers? <laughs> um, it's a great film, it's a very powerful film, and it's a very moving film. There's one, and I've seen it twice, and there's one moment that both times I, I welled up and I felt the emotion. It's when he, uh, he starts writing a note to his family. When you're doing a scene like that and you're thinking about a man uh, losing his family, do you, are you the kind of actor, do you think about your family then? Is that what you draw upon for that moment, for that emotion? You know, I have to confess, um, uh, I used them up a, a few movies ago. <laughs> you know, there, 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 are t there are times when you, you, look, our job is to get there somehow, you know? You have to get there. And sometimes it's, uh, um, the, the, so there are so many things that conspire against it being uh, a natural moment that you can flow into. But uh, in the case with this, uh, we had been through so much and we had gone through so many permutations of, of anxiety and fear and, and in fact violence that when the, when the time come, uh, I, I don't even know what happened, we just shot it. Uh, let's have a look at the clip. This is Captain Phillips. It opens next Friday here in the UK and it's gonna blow you away. Look at this. Close, Cap. 
terribly tense at times, but powerful, so thrilling, such a great experience. You know, the happiest clip you've shown so far has been Blind Date with Scylla <laughs> Black. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, the, I, I love a good pirate story. I, I love the excitement and the reality of this one. I love the old-style pirate story. I don't know if you know this story. There was a fellow over here, there was a fellow in the UK who was a much smaller tugboat. I think it was a Dutch tugboat called uh, Captain Darch. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, heard You know this, that story? Yeah. And well, it's what, the, 47 days at sea Yeah, or yeah, a like long that. time, and then they paid something like half a million uh, pounds or dollars, I'm not sure, to, to, to free him. So he was giving talks around the country to talk about his book, and he was booked by an esteemed uh, establishment we have called... It's a, it's a marvellous organisation called the Women's Institute. Okay, it's just kind of tradition. And they knew the captain was coming to talk to them. But they, they got the wrong message. They didn't know he was a, a real-life guy who'd been kidnapped by modern pirates. They thought perhaps he was an expert on old pirates, so they took the opportunity for fancy dress. <laughs> did this guy, did he have seizures based well, on appearance? Well, here's or? the thing. This shows him... Here's a picture of them with him as, after he'd given the talk. Now, you see... Oh, my God, look at that. Now, you see... So he's and there. that's him? That's the that's captain him. right that's in the middle the of captain. it? That's the captain. Look at he that. Was, Kept hostage for 47 days. The, the terror he must have felt. 47 days. <laughs> and then he turns up at the Women's Institute and they're openly and they're mocking like that. him. Look at that. That's wow. a true. It's, this, is, this is fantastic. That's pretty good, isn't it? But please tell me that this collection of costume women did not hold him no. for 47 <laughs> days. Did they, they let him go at they the end of the know, lecture? What's so lovely is God, he, he... Look at He's there with Captain Crunch. How lovely is that? <laughs> he, uh, That's sweet. He, uh, he, he was so generous about it, he stayed and he judged the fancy dress competition. <laughs> and that's why we have the picture. Are it? you sure those aren't real pirates? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, it's a very powerful one, as I said, and I was asking you about um, his family. I I'd like to ask you a little about yours. I'm not going to pry too much, but I know I'm jealous of you because we're a similar age, but you have grandchildren already. I do, yes. I have two grandkids. Wow. Three, uh, almost three and about four months old. That must be just about the best thing, isn't it? Oh, it's hilarious because you can just throw them around like beanbags. <laughs> it's, just, it's just great. And, uh, and I love it, you know? Wow. It's fantastic. Wow. And do you get time? Are they, do, they, the, do your kids dump the grandchildren off with you occasionally? Do you get a whole kind of weekend uh, with them? They're still just a little bit beyond that. And with the, in, in Los Angeles, so they live on the other side of town, and it takes forever to get over there sometimes. But we, 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 I swear we're going to just rush by and steal them out of the house one yeah. day so we can keep them and spoil them to the point of no return. Wow. <laughs> we are so desperate for grandchildren. My wife is trying to encourage my 16-year-old to have kids. <laughs> and saying, but don't worry, we'll look after them. That's a terrible thing to do. Well, there's a, you know, don't tell that, because they, on a date, someone might ask, you know, your 16-year-old, your do you have protection? And they say, sure, Mom and Dad will take care of it. <laughs> 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 let's get to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK. Let's, uh, let's take a break, ladies and gentlemen, but don't go away, because join me, I'll be talking to Tom after this, and we've got music to come from James Arthur. So, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still here with Mr Tom Hanks, I'm pleased to say. Um, Tom, it's uh, almost impossible to imagine a world in which you're not acting, you're not starring in some of our favourite movies, but if you weren't doing that, what would, uh, what would the future have held for you if, you hadn't, if the acting hadn't taken off? Oh, I would have... I would have... Jeez, what a sad state of affairs. I would have... You know, the best job I could imagine would be, like, to be a park ranger, you know? One of those guys that, say, that explain the history of where you are, or, you know, you give the tour of the historic... Historic yeah. place because I just would have I just I would never have made anything up But I would have made you know the facts so fascinating that people would come back again and again and again So you would have wanted an audience even then even then oh I would have been you know Just sadly pandering to anybody that would pay attention to me like a family of three on vacation Well gather around folks gather around <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would have been that guy with that smoky bear hat and the whole bit the new film as I said Captain Phillips is unbelievable and what's remarkable about your career I think uh, is the fact that you have done some of our favourite family films, like the Toy Story movies. Uh, great, yeah. Woody breathes life into them, and your performance is really... Oh, thank you. ...is incredible. And people, you know, it's not just the animation, it's the voice acting that really makes it fly. On the fourth one, we're going to be terrorised by a... Uh, really, not a, not a cuddly-looking cat at all. A, really? a cat that's really scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to chase the toys around with those evil demon eyes. I see <laughs> what you're saying, and I think you're wrong. I still think well, you're wrong. Um, uh, but, of course, uh, the family films, but then Castaway, uh, Philadelphia, Captain Phillips, incredible dramas as oh, well. I mean, you yeah, have yeah, the, yeah, the whole range there. Still, though, possibly, and we all have a favourite movie, I'm sure. I don't know, do you have a favourite movie of yours? Or you of mine? Yeah. Oh, no. It's, you can't do that. No, I can't do that. I'm not allowed. My favourite film, I'm sure many will agree with me, Big is still my favourite film. <laughs> I just uh, adore that film. Oh. 
The first time I saw it, I fell in love with it. I've seen it dozens of times since. I will see it <laughs> dozens of times more. Um, uh, you did the rap for me when we came on the show. Oh, last yeah. Time. The okay. space goes down, it's down, baby. Down, down the roller coaster. Sweet, sweet, baby. Sweet, sweet, don't let me go. Shimmy, shimmy, right. cocoa bop. Shimmy, shimmy, rock. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa bop. Shimmy, shimmy, rock. I met a girlfriend, a Trisket. She said, Trisket's a biscuit. Ice cream, soda, pop, vanilla on the top. Ooh, Shalita, walking down the street. Ten times a week, I'm at it, I said it, I stole my mama's credit, I'm cool, I'm hot, suck you oh, in the yeah. stomach three more. Oh, wow, sorry, I can't in. I shouldn't have come in there. Wow. Hey, thank you. Amazing, you remember it still. I remember it. Like it was yesterday. I'm going to keep texting you every four or five years. Know, I'll be back. We have a little surprise for you to do with my favourite movie, Big. I don't know if you'd come over here and see if uh, you have the energy, if you have the inclination to join in. I hope you do. If not, I can give it a show. So, uh, as you see, this, it looks like there's nothing there. Uh, it looks uh, it's, it's an optical illusion. Get ready for this. Here we go. You'll know what we're up to when I start doing this, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! What do you that? OK, so... Wow. And, uh... Oh, it actually works. Yeah, it works. Hold on. Wow. <laughs> I'm missing it down wow. here. Wow. Wow. Go we'll here. start more lower here. Go ahead. And then we do chopsticks, which is D and F. You want to try something faster? Just show us what you can do, because I know she's got the move. OK, you ready? Yeah. Jump in. I'm going to see if we get Sandra to join Tom. Sandra Bullock, ladies and gentlemen. Because you know, you know a bit of piano, don't you? Yeah, I know a little bit. OK, let's see if we can get something going here. All right. Well, now we can uh, do chopsticks, but maybe not in your heels, eh? Oh, uh, oh I yeah. can do chopsticks in my heels. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Ready? 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 Yeah. Ready? Ready? Yeah. And... Tom Hanks and Sandra Bullock, there you go. Wow. Thanks to all my guests tonight. Next week, I'll be joined by superstar chef Gordon Ramsay, footballing hero Frank Lampard. We have Julie Walters, surely a national treasure here as well. Plus, Harry Redknapp, the People's Choice for England manager. We also have music and chat from one of the UK's biggest music stars, Mr Dizzy Rascal will be here. That's next Saturday, don't miss him. And now... He won The X Factor by a landslide. He's here tonight with the first live TV performance of his fantastic new single, performing You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. Please go crazy for James Arthur. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
back with another green room full of superstars next Saturday at 5 past 10. Well, is he or isn't he the baby's father? David waits nervously for the DNA results in Coronation Street tomorrow night at 7. Fern Cotton's back in the hot seat ready to take on pal Holly. I'm sure Keith will help her get right back into the swing of things. Celebrity Juice next on ITV2.